All right, what's happening, everyone? Welcome to Cricket for Americans. Nick here, and I am on to watch the final minutes of this match. I have not been available to stream any of this match, but I was I was staying up late today following the match, and you're like, you know what? It's no longer Sunday. Let's go ahead and see the very end of this match. You got Anderson, who I've seen last a little while, but also Stuart Broad. Who I'm not, I've seen him, I think I've heard of him getting a half century before. <laughs> I've not seen it. So, I mean, this, this could end in, in a couple balls, or this could last, last a little bit longer. But regardless, however long it is, am I going to witness England be able to outlast for the last session with Anderson and Broad, who are known more for their bowling? as a very, very defensive block for no runs. Survived that over by Stark. Stark's two wickets, 39 runs. Thank you so much for joining me today. Join me tonight, join me this morning, wherever you're at. For looks like a pink ball match. That's pretty cool. Oh, we got some people in the chat here. I'll just get a few things ready. Butler hit wicket. Oh no, I missed that part. I haven't following the last few hours, but I've been doing other things, been playing, doing some gaming. Um, did a reaction on board reviews. Did not see the hit wicket. Yeah, I just missed it. Oh, it just happened. Holy cow. Yeah, this series, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. It's been, <laughs> if you're an England fan, which I am, oh, it's been rough. Greatest cricketing, cricketing rivalry. What's up, Rashad, Nikhil, Richard, Sahil, Simon, Graham, John, Agent, and Nikhil. Oh, Richard Sin. There's an audio problem. There's an audio problem. All right, let me see. Let me know if that's better. Let me know if that's better. What's up, Han Solo? Long time no see. Says audio's good now. Yeah, I, I put it on mute. <laughs> that's why it was good. Let me know how it is now. I just unmuted myself. I unmuted myself for a second. And let me know how that is right there. England is getting thrashed in this match. Getting absolutely thrashed. I mean, I've been following along with this busy, busy last five days. I'm I'm surprised I got to the fifth day. One thing I'm going to mention in, in our three wickets is the fact that Australia, they're, they're kind of like me when it comes to competitive nature. They declare twice, which whenever I feel like you declare on the test side, it's like a slap in the face, right? I mean, it's a good call. You got to declare sometimes because you can't just score forever and not finish the match. You don't want to finish in a draw. You want to finish in a win. But it's kind of a slap in the face when you declare, like, mm, we're better than you. Oh, oh, ho, 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 ho. through the slips, just barely in between. What is that? The fourth and fifth slip? Third and fourth slip? Oh, wow. But, um, they declared after they lost nine wickets, which I love. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It's so salty because it's like, nope, you're not going to get us out. We're going to let you get us out by declaring ourselves. But they declared both innings. 400 some odd runs in the, in the 473 runs in the first innings, 230 in the second. England got 236 all out, and now they're at 186. I mean, it just seems like it's a matter of time. Look at that. They got... 
There's another few runs. There's another few runs. Jimmy got himself on the board. They're at 188 now. <laughs> England can't declare now. Exactly. But they got like four or five slips. They got a gully. It looks like they got a short leg. It looks like they got a mid leg. I mean, they got everyone out there just around. It's just a matter of time. Could you imagine this cat and mouse game lasted for two hours? And it was a draw. I don't think that's ever going to happen in a million years. But could you imagine? Because they got like eight guys. Not counting the bowler. Right there. Yeah, Hamid has been trash in this match. Rory B Burns has not been good, but he was he's better, which I had said in a, in a, our three wickets for the last one can only get better <laughs> than how he was in the first match. What's up, Biggs? Good to see you. But Hamid has been atrocious. We'll admit, though, Josh Butler did hang in there for a very long time. Yeah, he did. Didn't put up too much runs. But he's hung in there. My man Chris Wokes got a 44. Not great, but not horrible. Oh, I can only imagine when the line was bowling the field placement. Oh, there you go. That could be a boundary right there. That's going to be a four. Ooh, broad with a boundary. The, the runs don't really matter. It's about outlasting right here. And we're we're just minutes in this second this third session. Minutes. So they still got like a minute fifty or an hour fifty. But this match is it's been atrocious for England. This is supposed to be the match that England had their best odds in winning. And it just did not come to fruition. My man Chris Wolf's Captain England. Ew. I gotta pretend like I don't know that guy. Not been good at all. Oh. Man, I love being a turtle. That's what Broad just did his best impression of right there with ducking on that one. Stark's in there. He's got two wickets looking for that third and all-important game-winning wicket. Time for a 100 partnership? <laughs> I would 100% drop Pope and Burns and put Bearstow back. I would put Bearstow back in there, too. Wow, look at that. They got three, seven. Fielders on both sides. Silly point almost in short leg. You have seven. You have six in the slips on both sides. I'm not sure what you call it, like V formation in the gully there. Wow. It didn't get past Nathan Lyon that time. What has happened, everyone? Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to like this uh, last minute impromptu stream. It's awesome that you are watching along to watch the end of this. Why are the stands empty? Maybe do the Corona new variant. I don't know. Maybe the fans got bored. I don't know. The commentators were talking about how the Barmy Army is still making noise. The doctor says Root took a lot of slack for picking Wokes over Wood. But we all know Root listens to Nick. <laughs> uh, this looked like it was a good call this time. Oh, gosh. They're looking. Oh, man. They're living so dangerously. Chris Wokes better beautifully in both innings. Can only imagine what Butler's feeling right now. So close and yet so far. Yeah, could you imagine? I mean, that was the main partnership in this later part of this day was Wokes and Butler. If they could have outlasted, they could have got to that third session. Then you're talking about a possible draw, right? Hit wicket. I missed it. Blitz once again. I missed it. Sion says Pope was supposed to be a future captain, not even look like a future batsman. Yeah, it's rough right now for Pope. Are you excited about Florida in two days? I am. I'm not going to lie. I feel bad. I feel like a heel, you know, ditching the family. But we're going to be gone. I'm going to be away from my house for like a total of like 26 hours. Four and a half hour flight. Hang out there. Do the match. Four and a half hour flight back. All in about 26 hours. I don't like flying. I don't, I'm not I'm not afraid of fly, flying, but I just get bored in a flight. But we're taking the red eye there, so that'll be nice to get some sleep. But I'm very excited for my first match. Super excited for my first match. 
And you guys are going to love it because obviously we're going to be vlogging it. We'll post it after I get back and I edit it a little bit. I don't see us live streaming anything, but you never know. But I don't see that. We're going to try to talk to some people, but it's going to be tough. On the website for USA Cricket, it says they're having a few media uh, events, but they're taking place. One's taking place today and one's taking place tomorrow. We won't be there in time. But we're going to try to still see if we can make something happen. We're going to try to record our three wickets, not live, but uh, record our three wickets on location there. Super excited. Super excited. 80% chance of rain, though, Mr. Han. So you're going to love that. We'll have a little ponchos out there. There it is. There it is. I think they should look at that catch just to make sure, but it looks like that's it. Done and dusted. Done and dusted. Yeah, this is the third session. But they just started the third session. I'll talk about Chris Wokes and Butler making it to the third before losing their wickets. Yeah, Gabe and I will be there in Fort Lauderdale for USA versus Ireland. And we're excited for it. Our first match will be a USA match as it should be, and we will be there. If you happen to be in Fort Lauderdale going to that match, first T20 match, come find us. I can't imagine it's going to be a packed house. I hope it will be, but I can't imagine. Yep, no work, the doctor. No work. It's 1.42 a.m. here, and uh, winter break. I'm on winter break. That's right. It's over, baby. A Pfeiffer for Jai Richardson. Is that who got that last wicket? Jai Richardson. Good for him. I haven't heard about him in a while. Probably since the... Probably since watching the test, to tell you the truth. The doctor says 2-0. and oh. Australia, they're dominant. This could possibly be a whitewash. And I hate to say that because it's so disrespectful. But this quite possibly will be a whitewash. Thank you, whitewash. Thank you so much for joining here on Cricket for America. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll stick around for a few minutes here, a little while. Jai Richardson with the Fiverr. Woo! Jeremy says, all done, 2-0. Melbourne's Boxing Day test match next. Yeah, it starts on Boxing Day, December 26th, which I believe for us is still our Christmas evening, so we will not be streaming on that day. I bet Nick enjoyed Joe Root getting hit in the family jewels. <laughs> I didn't see it. How dare you, Han? No, I would not enjoy that. <laughs> Something, wrong. Something wrong with you. The way Butler got out, it was such a shame. Yeah, I didn't see it live, Argent. Thanks for joining. Good to see you. I didn't see it live, but that is a bummer. I mean, let's look at what England did. It's, it's an embarrassment. They're not on the same level as Australia right now in Australia. Let's see what England's done in their two innings. Hamid and Burns combined for two, 10 as their opening partnership. Milan and Root did what they did in the second innings of the first match. 80 and 62 respectively. Stokes gave you 34, showed a little bit of life. Then he got bowled out by Green. But then Ollie Pope, 5. Josh Butler, duck ugh, in that first innings. Chris Wokes, 24. Ollie Robinson, Duck, Broad, 9. James Anderson, 5. And then this innings, not much better. Rory Burns, high score for him so far in the Ashes, 34. Hamid, Duck. Milan, Root, 44 combined. I mean, Milan and Root need to last longer than that. Stokes, 12, needs to last longer than that. Ollie Pope doesn't, can't even find anything right now. In Australia. And then Josh Butler and Wokes. You talk about those five bat batters. How you just need them to last a little bit longer. And you can talk about a draw right here. That's just that's just crazy. The Joe Root low blow. Was this your first time seeing it? Your thoughts? I did not see the low blow. Oh, did they just show it? I might have missed it. I'm talking while they're showing the, the replay here. 
Rory Burns, how dare he? Yeah, it was the last ball for Joe Root. I did remember um, looking that up this morning. How do you get out on the last ball of the day? Gosh. Definitely should have let it go. Livingston would offer more than Pope. At least he can bowl spin. Yeah, he can bowl a little bit. It's a good call. So you think Bear still? You think Livingston could be the possible change? Is Livingston even there in England? Is he even there? That would be crazy. I mean, how Butler went out tells it all. When it rains, it pours. Yeah, feast or famine. That's how sports is sometimes. Draw was never on the cards. What are you talking about? Joe Root doesn't go out in that very last ball, and he establishes himself a little bit today. You last everyone just a little bit more. I think a draw was definitely on the cards. Definitely, but England, atrocious. Let's talk about Australia and what they were able to do. Marcus Harris, Gabe, they called it. What's he doing there? He went down three runs. Warner, once again, Warner is the heart and soul of this team. And the reason I say that is you know loose bus change is going to do what loose bus change does. You know that Stephen SPD Smith is going to do what he does. You know that. And so Warner is the most important wicket because he was coming off a really rough patch in the limited format, limited formats, IPL and other things, before he started turning it on in the World Cup. He's the most important wicket. You let Warner, Loose Bus Change, and Stephen Smith almost combine for 300. Head 18, Green 2, Alex Carey. There you go, half century. I said he was going to have a good day on the first match. Had a good day on the second match. Stark 39, Nestor 35. Never heard of him before. Stark 39, very nice. Stokes had three wickets. And then in their second innings, Warner 13. So he got run out. So that was big. But the damage had already been done. Marcus Harris, 23. Nesser, 3. Must have been the night watchman there. Loose bus change, 51. SPD, 6. Head, another half century in this series. It's his second half century in the match. Here's Joe Root speaking. Obviously, he's not too injured from that low blow. Let's hear what he has to say. Wow, didn't learn from it. He seems very frustrated. Is this the most frustrated I've seen him? I think so. I mean, he's very calm about it. He's not a gay up there losing his mind, but he seems very frustrated. Nick, do you know that England stopped playing domestic red ball in the summer for T20, and therefore the batsmen never faced the fastest and closest test match conditions? No, I did not know that. Big mistake? Maybe. Josh is changing the match every time. Drop catch England out of the game. Take catch, bring England back. Yeah, Livingston playing the big bash. More than likely he is. He didn't technically get out in the last ball. Ooh, please explain. Please explain. Uh, Nick, I think your English lens is a little foggy. The palms were all cooked. Look at the body language. Am I giving them any kind of props? Am I giving them any kind of props? No, they were atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. Oh, man, it's been absolutely rough. I'm not sure what lens I'm looking at. They're playing bad right now. If they have it, Andrew Cook, that's the play. I'm going to pick up some merch for myself. I'm going to try to get myself some camphor merch for the wife. She's a big fan. But 
Gabe and I don't have a lot of hope. Don't have a lot of hope that we're going to be able to get some merch for crying out loud. We're not sure that's going to be possible. We hope so. Absolutely. I got to get myself a jersey. Got to get myself a hat. Especially a hat. Jeez. Washed out. No, they have they have no life right now. They have absolutely no life. Absolutely, Nikhil. Absolutely. Not even a question right there. <laughs> I think Michael Hayes. Hey, I liked you in WWE with your commentary. I think Michael Hayes is a little late to the party. I'm going to be at the match, my friend. The first match on the on the 20, 22nd. I'm going to be there live. We'll be vlogging it. We'll put the vlog, edit the vlog together and post it as soon as we get some internet. But I'm going to be there live with Gabe and my brother Chris. The three of us will be there for that first match. So I'll definitely be watching it. And on the USA Cricket website, they talk about how several players, I didn't see how many, several have contracted coronavirus. And so they're going to, they're, they got backups. They're, they had to cancel the warm ups. And so I believe the match we're going to go is the first, they're going to play it all without any warm ups besides maybe some net practice. So we're going to get there early. If any of you are going to be there in Fort Lauderdale, look for Gabe and I. We will be there. I'll be wearing the hat. Gabe will be wearing a hat. And we would love to meet any of you guys there. Don't be afraid to say hello. Oh, Gabe can't get enough of the Boston merch. He's He honest, secretly, he loves himself, that Red Sox hat. Oh, he loves himself. He's afraid to talk to his friends about it. Boxing Day. Four players. Look at Biggs right on top of it. Jeez Louise. Right on top of it. Yeah, I think USA is on a little bit of a winning streak. As they played in uh, whatever that qualification match or something like that was for the World Cup. So, they're on a little bit of a winning streak. Can't wait to see what they do. Wicket at the closing stages usually calls the close on the day. That's why it's the last ball. Technically, you are right. Okay, so maybe a few more balls. But I had, it had to be close to that time, right? But I see what you're saying. Appreciate that. <laughs> you don't ever take a break. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man alive. Han Solo. It's been too long, my friend. Speaking of the Big Bash, just a little update. The Scorchers are playing against the Hurricanes. And the Scorchers scored 167 in their innings. For anyone that's following along, I'm still a Sydney Sixers fan, returning champs. I think they're two-time returning champs. They beat Gabe's stars two in a row so far. The first one was, oh, man, talk about net runner rate. Shellacked them. The second match took them a third to last ball before they were able to chase. Cheers, Gilly. Minus, man, the match. <laughs> yes. All 31. Hey, it's like 47 on my end. Can like it. Absolutely. There's minus. It's crazy because when we watched the test, he was up and coming. At least that's the way they portrayed him in that series. And we were we came to like a year later or something like that. 
And then everyone was telling us that this guy's killing it on the international stage. And he still continues to be so good. It's insane. Nick, you promised or at least mentioned that you'll get harsh. <laughs> I did not make a promise. I said I would love for him to get on here. We have zero traction on that. Zero traction whatsoever. Um, <laughs> I, I, Hopefully one time, one day, but we have no leads on that. Who's Curtis Patterson? Is that from the Scorchers match? Yeah, 78 on 40. I don't know who he is, but he got 78. Look at Ashton Agar. A strike rate of almost 300. 30 runs on 11 balls. How dare you, Han Solo? Yeah, you'll look to see us in the comm box. <laughs> Maybe not this time. Uh, always excited for a tour that involves India. Absolutely. Absolutely. Han Solo, how dare you? They have Tom Curran and Jordan. I'm a fan now, too. Both of them got destroyed. What was that match they lost? I think it was against Hobart. They got destroyed by them. They both gave up serious runs. I think Tom Curran gave like 48 runs and three overs. And I said, oh, that's the Tom Curran I know. Oh, man. This man was the MVP two years ago. He didn't show up at all last year. Literally did not show up to the BBL last year. And they still won it. That's how stacked that team is. Christmas witch. Christmas wish. How many overs left? Oh, there was probably quite a few overs left. There was probably a few overs left. I, I would be willing to bet 20 overs or so. What do you guys say? I'm not sure if I can find that somewhere. There was still about an hour and 40 minutes left. That is not economical. 21? Hey, if that's true, I was close. Nick, do you think India would make history by getting their first series win? They've never got a series win in South Africa? How dare they? Absolutely. I know South Africa is tough to win. But absolutely, why not? I heard Rohit's out, though. I think that's what I heard. That stinks. But they got such depth. Norkia will trouble Coley for sure. Coley's got to... I still have yet to see a Coley century. Just saying, that would be nice. Wow, they've never won a series in South Africa. That is tough. That's tough. Sony's making a documentary for India. Oh, absolutely. They've got to. They've absolutely got to. <laughs> we'll make sure he doesn't disgrace CFA. You're good, John. <laughs> He'll probably throw a bottle on the field, though. I I'm just hoping that I can, like, I can scout out the gay rant before it happens so I can catch it live, like the side view when he's sitting next to me and he sees a bad call against USA. Oh. I hope I can get that live. That would be glorious. I mean, not live, but I can hope I can get that in action so I can post it later on. Nick, until the last decade or so, India never had a good rotation of fast bowlers. South Africa is similar to Australia. You need quicks to win there. I'm sure we will hear Gay's voice through the stump mics. <laughs> That'd be interesting. I'm really curious. I'm really curious to see how many people will be in attendance. They're selling the tickets, all the tickets for just 10 bucks. 10 bucks. 
that makes me believe that's going to be like a minor league baseball game as far as attendance goes. Ten bucks in this country? <laughs> There's not a lot of faith in making money on that, my friends. Which is why I'm nervous there's not going to be any merch there. Besides maybe like a hundred shirts or something. But ten bucks. And there's no, like it's just, I guess first come, first serve. I'm assuming it's bleachers. I've never been to that stadium before. Never heard of the stadium. Um, I've been to Fort Lauderdale, but not for a very long time. But 10 bucks? One of the, I think it's the ODI match. You can pay $99 and get a VIP section. Gabe contacted them and said, can we get a VIP section for the T20 match? And they said, nope, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Vignesh, it's going to be in Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Which is, you know, 3,000 miles away from me. Where we're at here in Vegas. But we're going to take the red eye. We'll get there in about four and a half hours. It's $10 for a normal ticket. $1,000 to be out of the earshot of Mr. Lara. <laughs> Priceless. It's like a MasterCard commercial. Ciao, John. Australia fans, congrats on another win. This is supposed to be the one that you're supposed to be nervous about. This is supposed to be the match that, you know, England was going to bounce back here in Adelaide, Adelaide, Adelaide. But no, not even close. I don't even think Australia broke a sweat, to tell you the truth. They want to fill the seats, get attention, and once people get a liking, the price will be on the up. Probably. But it makes me nervous. It makes me nervous, very sure, very much. That there's not going to be enough fans there. I hope there is. But even if there's not, it gives us at Cricket for Americans a little more leverage to say, hey, you need us on that wall. You want us on that wall. Right? You need us promoting USA Cricket. Open up the bag, as Gabe likes to say. And bring CFA a sponsorship. Absolutely, Vignesh. We're going to post it again. Gabe posted it on our channel he posted on Twitter, maybe, not our channel. I think I posted on our channel. We're going to be there. See with our own eyes. Our very first match. I'm very proud that our first live match is going to be a USA cricket match. It's very fitting. <laughs> God. Oh, I love it. Is it. Are you talking about the Big Bash match? You're, there's no way. Yeah, you're talking about the big bash. Big bash match. How is that not a wide? <laughs> He's already complaining. Hobart. Man alive. Let's see the points table right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry my Sydney Sixers are in first place. No, I'm not. How's Melbourne? How are the Stars in fourth place? Their two losses came to the Sixers. How have they played the Sixers twice already? There's seven other teams. Hobart won. I think that was the one match they won was against the Sixers. My Sixers are three and one. I love it. Perth is three and zero. Oh. oh, we can't have that. Let's go Hobart. We can't have them being three and zero. Oh. Appreciate that, Vignesh. Are they broadcasting on the TV? Not that I know of. I'm gonna, that's a good thing. I'm going to look into that to see if they're going to be broadcasting it somewhere. See if I can find myself in the stands at some point. What's up, Michelle? Michelle, how are you? Is Kerry the same player that Gabe was destroying the T20 matches in England last year? Probably. I had said that he was going to have a good match one. It wasn't until match two. But still, I had said it, so I'm taking credit for it. They don't have a pulse. The England team does not have a pulse whatsoever. Yeah, it'll be on Willow. But I can't record on Willow. Joe Root is not a great test captain or just has a very bad team. This is a very good question. Thank you, Piyush. Piyush. Thank you so much for this question. I've been thinking a lot about this, and I didn't mention it in our three wickets. But I wanted to. I had just forgotten to do so. 
This is a great question. And I'm going to tell you why. You look at what England has done. Yes, the WTC, they came just a little short. They had a chance to get to that WTC final if their tour in India was more successful than it was. But this is why I think that you have a really good point. I don't know if he's able to make adjustments in series that don't go well. And I get it. Playing in India and then playing in Australia is tough. But I, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, he lost the series, the four matches that were played in England against India. And yes, he's had great individual performances for the most part. He had that duck on that really good ball in the first innings of the first match. He went down for 20 some odd, maybe 20 runs, went below the root line. No, he got 24. Maybe went above the root line, just barely. But I don't know how good of a captain he is, to tell you the truth. Batter, he's fantastic. He's still in amazing form. He's still a very, very tough out. But as far as the captain goes, I just don't know. I and this is what I was thinking. I'm so harsh on in on a Coley not being able to produce in those finals matches in the tournament for the World Cup. I got to give that to Root as well. I got to give him the same treatment. So I don't think he's that good of a captain. And I don't know how much is to blame for him or someone else on the selectors, the the selections that have been made. But those are atrocious, atrocious as well. What do you guys think? Is Root a good captain? Let's see. OTD says, the problem with England is no one in the team really loves playing the game. They play it to keep a roof over their head. It is their job, but they do their warm-ups with soccer balls. Wow. That's a harsh comment right there, OTD. I'm not going to lie. To assume that, that's a strong statement. I'm curious where you're getting that from. Rue's a top-level player, but an awful captain. There you go. He is tactfully unaware and not inspirational. Dr. Jihan, what's up? you got to be pumped up, right? I mean, I know, I know you're going to say you're not surprised whatsoever. I know you're going to say, just like your team didn't break a sweat, that you didn't break a sweat, but man alive. They are manhandling England. It says Ian Chapel thinks Joe Root shouldn't be allowed to cap in a school site. Wow. <laughs> school site. Oh man. That's harsh. Soccer ball warm-up has been a norm for a while. I remember the Mighty Ducks, they warmed up with a football on the ice. <laughs> remember that movie. Michelle says, I think the problem with the England team is that they rarely pick their best players for the match according to the conditions. They always select the wrong players, always thinking about the next match. They're doing a lot of things wrong. A lot of things wrong, and that might be a really, really good point. Might be a good factor towards what's going on. Thank you so much for that. Can Jihan go to Florida and give Gabe a uh, yapendectomy? All I'm going to say about Gabe is, uh, I can't, oh, eunuch. That's the word of the day when you're around Gabe, eunuch. Root is a good player, not sure about captaincy. Wokes for captain. Yes, Don and Jaya, I love your work. Yes, absolutely. Root is not a good tactician, a good representative, yes, lacks an aggressive approach. I think that's the truth. Ain't that the truth. Killer instinct. England played better than when Stokes was standing in for Root after he had copped one in the McNuggets. <laughs> in the McNuggets. Ian makes good points. He doesn't want Smith to be anywhere near the leadership. I wouldn't want him either, to tell you the truth. But he did a great job filling in for Cummins. Man, he did a fantastic job. Those boys are ready to play. Root's a good captain. The problem is in the system, they are failing to produce quality spinners and bowlers who can produce outside swinging conditions. Soham, I appreciate your loyalty to Joe Root, but even you know that's not accurate. Gabe the rock star put CFA on the map. Gabe? Root may be a eunuch after yesterday's blows. Oh, wow. 
Cole to play his 100th test this series. Ooh, geez, Louise. Well, I appreciate everyone joining me today for this 40-minute stream early in the morning here to watch the end of this match. I thought that since I wasn't able to stream earlier throughout this match, why not watch the end of it? It happened sooner than I was hoping it would. I was hoping for some drama, but there was no drama. I knew it wasn't going to happen. I was just hoping for it. Thank you so much for joining and sticking around and hanging out and leaving your comments and hopefully liking the stream. And if you're new to the channel, if you've not seen us before and you enjoy what you heard by the time you were here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. Jihan says, I think if England bat first and get a good score on the board, they can put Australia under pressure if they take their catches and stop bowling no balls. Only Warner and Head have dominated the bowling. Um, Labashane played pretty well, right? But, yes, I think the key that Australia, they batted first both times. No, 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 no. They batted first this match. Really helped put some pressure. Like in this match, they need a spinner to slow down the scoring rate, and they did. I really think all teams should let go. Let go of this top player captain policy. Yeah, you got to have someone. I mean, think about it. Tim Payne was Australia's captain for the last several years. He wasn't their top player, right? But yes, it's it's a lot, a lot of pressure, a lot of play pressure. After dropping catches, no ball wickets, missing runouts. This is exactly where they were supposed to be. Labashane and Smith got runs, but scored slowly. Couldn't dominate. Oh, so you're talking about high strike rate. Okay. Uh, in a match like this, I like to see balls being, uh, you know, played as well. But but I hear what you're saying. Hobart's got only 10 runs in the first, 12 runs in the first three overs. Not very good. Well. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and head out and go to Ben. But I will see you tomorrow on Cricket Tuesday. And until next time, adios.